Hello, hello everybody, great to see you. Big hello to everybody in the chat. Lovely to see the channel members there as well. Welcome everybody. I'm Natalie and this is Scientology Life After a Call where we talk about the Scientology news that has the internet buzzing. We talk about my 35 years in Scientology leaving with three generations of my family. And throughout the week I do interviews as well. So make sure when you hit that notification bell that you, oh, I got it backwards. When you hit the subscribe button, set that notification bell as well so you can get those notifications. And what else helps them get out is like. So everyone who's already here, if you could all hit that like button, I would absolutely appreciate it. We have a lot to talk about today. We are gonna talk about some Scientology celebrity news. We're gonna get into protest news. We're gonna get into a few things. We're gonna talk about, I've got, I've gotten so many emails about Oh No Nora's video as it relates to Mitch Brisker. We're gonna to touch on that, share a couple clips, share more from Clearwater where we are wrapping it up here. My Tony and I have been out here in Clearwater protesting Scientology, having the most amazing time meeting people in the community, spending time together. It, it's just been amazing. You know, it's really interesting because when we first, when we were coming, we were talking about different other things we would do too and creating more content. And honestly, we spent the chunk of our time just talking, <laughs> getting to know each other, sharing about our experiences, what life is like now after a call. It has been so amazing. Uh, just amazing. Just amazing. I knew it would be great and it would be really fun. And because I've talked to them so much online, off stream, but you know, on a video call, but in person, it's, it's not the same thing. And it's funny because sometimes, in fact, I was talking to, I was across from Kelly Copter and I was going to ask something about Liz, Gail. And in my brain for like half a second, I realized like Liz is right next to me. I can just ask her. <laughs> Kelly's not on a screen. <laughs> we are in person. <laughs> a lot of those moments, but it's been absolutely wonderful. I want to show you guys a clip because we had a conversation not that long ago. And hey, hello to everybody else just jumping in. Please hit that like button. Okay. And 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 later on in the video, we will talk more about Clearwater, but I want to get to some of the recap news first. But later in the video, we're going to talk more about some things happening here in Clearwater. You know how I'll sh I'll often talk about with you guys, and you've seen it. You see it play out on these different clips as well. Scientologists will not talk about Scientology because I jokingly like to say the number one rule, the first rule of Scientology is don't talk about Scientology. Instead, Scientologists are trained to say, read a book, read a book, buy a book, buy a book. Actually, usually it is. It's buy a book, buy a book. Here's a book, give me, $45, <laughs> but they don't actually explain it. I'm going to show you a little clip here of Kirstie Alley, who she passed away a couple years ago. But prior to that, she was on the UK Big Brother. And thank you to everybody who sent me the clips of it. And she gets asked, what is Scientology? And the answer she gives is pretty typical of a Scientologist. We're going to jump over to that. But before then, I want to give a big thank you to my mods. Nancy's here. I do believe. Actually, it might just be Nancy right now, but uh, uh, Grace Kelly might be jumping in. Tony's running a couple of errands, but he might make it make it back in time as well. He's just doing the last last few minutes of things. So let's get over to this video. I saw this. This was sent to me, and I'm like, oh my gosh, classic, classic example of the first rule of Scientology, which is don't talk about Scientology. Check this out. And again, this is from Celebrity Big Brother 28. He is trying to find out what it is, literally trying to find out what Scientology is, and she won't tell him. Just go read a book. Just forget the fact that we're in the middle of filming a show. And look, I, here's how I look at it. That was such a great opportunity to communicate what Scientology was with people. There is a simple even answer that Scientology themselves use to explain it, right? There's like different versions of that, but she did none of that. It was just ask, you know, read a book, buy a book, go to the Scientology TV website. Not going to tell you what it is, right, Lily? It was so weird. It was so weird. And to answer somebody's question, these are Tony's glasses because I can't find my reading glasses. I somehow lost them in the last 24 hours. And my regular glasses, which you guys hardly ever get to see, because with my regular glasses, I can't see the screen. I got to wear my readers and I cannot find mine. But they're cute, aren't they? I actually kind of like it. It kind of goes with my outfit. All right. So 
you see the way she answered that. This is why part, part of the reason why I think having Re Rebecca Minkoff, who comes from one of the most influential Scientology families, having her on The Real Housewives of New York has me so excited because this is not just anybody Scientologist, right? This is not like, this is somebody who belongs to one of the most influential families when it comes to Scientology, one of the biggest donators to Scientology. This is a Twitter post from Yashir Ali. And he says, a reminder that Dr. David Minkoff is the father of designer Rebecca Minkoff. The Minkoffs are among the most influential Scientology families. They have donated over 5 million to Scientology slush fund. Here they are getting a Scientology award for their massive donation. And there's, you can see Rebecca right there. I'm assuming that's her husband and kids, but there is the whole family. Now, what is the significance of this Dr. Minkoff, you ask? For those of you who may not know, we're gonna take a look at that too, because this backstory is really important to this. And I really hope that this does actually happen, that she does become a cast member on Real Housewives of New York. And I'm gonna share more on why, because some of you may or may not know. Okay, so this is from uh, this is from Us Us Weekly. Now it talks about the news that designer Rebecca Minkoff is filming with the Real Housewives of New York City cast, and it's brought it's brought with it some fascinating questions. Mainly, will Minkoff speak belief? Will mainly will Minkoff's beliefs as a Scientologist play a role in season fifteen of the Bravo staple? A source close to production told Us Weekly that Minkoff has been shooting with some of the ladies for the upcoming season in an unspecified role. But how much of her fans, how much her, of her fans end up seeing this season, viewers should not expect her to shy away from her religion. Uh, let's see. As she, she told the New York Times in 2021, I'm totally open, but it's not my job to proselytize. Okay. Minkoff's relationship to Scientology is her own, and as the profile highlighted, she identifies as both a Jewish and a Scientologist. She refers, oh, she both as Jewish and a Scientologist. She refers to the church as more of a self-improvement philosophy. So see, already the distancing is starting. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You know what? I'm, I'm Jewish. I, I turn to Scientology just for, you know, just more. It's just tools for life kind of a thing. Here's the deal though. I think there's a lot of confusion when people hear the world religion. Immediately you hear that, I pray to L. Ron Hubbard, she said. I studied it, I take classes and that's the extent of it. And it's helped me stay centered. I don't have all the answers when I need someone. It's a place for me to get answers. Now, here's the deal. Her dad, here's the part that talks about her dad. Those same critics call Scientology a cult and point to the role Minkoff's father, also a Scientologist, might have played in the 1995 death of Lisa McPherson. McPherson was a Scientologist whom the church convinced to not seek medical care after a minor traffic accident. She instead spent 17 days in the care of a church until her death. Rebecca's father, David Minkoff, was the doctor who pronounced McPherson dead. You guys, those of you who are familiar with the Lisa McPherson tragedy, tragedy and scandal for Scientology, she was taken, she, they drove past a couple hospitals to get to a hospital where there was a Scientologist. This is who her dad is. So that's right, Carrie. Ah, oh, hell no. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So this is already out. This is known. It's more known in the Scientology, ex-Scientology community. But the fact that Us Weekly called it out in their story about her potential being on The Real Housewives of New York, this is why I am just hoping that Scientology doesn't put the kibosh on this because <laughs> it's going to be so amazing. It's going to be so amazing. I really hope it's happening. I truly do. Because it's going to bring more attention to that. It's going to be, it just, that's what happens when usually a Scientologist ends up in the media is it's an opportunity to like, well, are you aware of this, this? Do you know about Lisa McPherson? Do you know your dad that this was his role in it? Uh, and she's already, like I said, it sounds to me like she's dis distancing herself. I've done some courses. You hear that sometimes. And you know what? Maybe she isn't that much of a dedicated Scientologist, but then she needs to speak up about it then. And I think be honest about it and share 
what her point of view is on it. I think there's more to it than what she's been saying. Yeah, it just sounds like a, a set line, you know, th that they just say. Adrian Wright, there's nothing to tell. That's why Travolta and Cruz say same crap. That is true. That is very true. Stevie Weeby, if you watch his channel here on YouTube, he had DOA on the other day. They did an interview that was hilarious, including this this part here where DOA brought out, you guys know how he was missing the socks, how his socks were stolen, well, commandeered, taken, his arrested, some might say, his socks, by the LAPD, and it took forever to get them back, and he did finally get them back. But let's take a little peek at this interview on the Stevie Weeby show with DOA. Black socks or DOA? These are the famous DOA black socks. Yeah, my, Is there a story behind this? Yes, they're my favorite black crew socks. Uh, it took a month and a half for LAPD to give them back. They actually got a search warrant and searched my car and took these pair of why? socks. Why? Why? I don't How know. Did they, didn't, that point? they didn't take the white socks. They only wanted the black socks. Why? My Scooby-Doo socks, they weren't concerned about them, only the black socks. I had all sorts of black socks, and these were clean. It's a fun interview, and if you know the story of the socks and the sock puppetry that continued afterwards, then you might find it as hilarious as I actually thought it was. Oh, I just cracked up through it. I really did. I really did. We are also going to get to a clip of DOA. He was assaulted outside of La Poubelle last night, and it was nasty. We will get to that. That's a little bit later. Yes, Farah, it was a great interview. I thought so too. I thought so too. Great info and fun as well. I always love that when those two things can be tied together. Now, I have a clip to share with you from Santa Monica Close Up. That is the name of the channel. Links down below in the description to all of the videos that we're going to be talking about. Oh my gosh, you guys. You got to see this. I'm going to show it to you and then we're going to we are going to talk about it. Volunteer minister tent gets set up. They don't have a permit for it. So these are, I, I'm not 100% if this is the police or who this is, but are coming and busting them for not having a permit. You know how, let's be honest, y'all. You know how Scientology thinks they can just show up everywhere, wherever, and just do what they want, right? Because they are above the law. I myself was told that by multiple Sea Org members, that Scientology in the Sea Org is above the law. They don't need to follow the laws of the land, despite the fact that they hand out that way to happiness booklet. And that's one of the precepts. But I don't know. Right. It wouldn't be like Scientology to be hypocrites like that. Right. <laughs> OK, let's take a look at this, because there are a few things that we need to talk about that's happening here. This is really I'm so glad this got caught on video. Okay, I don't know if you guys can hear what he just said. This is a really important part. The officer, let's say, is letting him know, you guys don't have a permit for this. That rack shouldn't be up. That table shouldn't be up. What does the Scientologist say? This blew my mind almost as much as the clip we shared yesterday about the Scientologist saying that at one time in the past, Scientologists may have been held and tied up against their will, but we don't do that anymore. He says, I mocked it up. Now, one, tell me in the chat. Tell me in the chat or tell me in the comments, you guys. Is that a mocked up is a word I know of in Scientology? It means you've created something. I know there's a mock-up in the world outside of Scientology, but to say I mocked up the table, is that a Scientology way of saying it or is that regular English? Can somebody tell me in the chat, in the live chat if you know? Because the Scientologist says about that table, I mocked it up for a photo. It was just for the photo and I can show you the photo. So here we have a Scientologist, a volunteer minister admitting once again, because this has been admitted before, that they create photo ops to share to make it look like they're doing things in and outside of the community. And it blew my mind. It blew my mind. It really did. It was, I just mocked it up for the photo. <laughs> and he knew somebody had a camera behind him too. Yeah, if you don't have earbuds in, you might not have been able to, to, to hear that really, really good. But let me take another look and see if there was anything else. So now the officer is telling him that the table 
that they're doing the Scientology assists on, that the table is an issue because anybody walking by would think that that was a massage table and they were giving or selling massages and that is not okay. So he's busting them on the table with the racks. He's busting them on the table that looks like a massage table. What are you doing? It's just gold. It's just gold. Okay, so someone said classic cult talk. Okay. All right, from a poet, Brian says, normal people would say set up the table. All right, I wasn't 100% Scientologies. Okay, that's what I thought it was. So, yep, even Tim says, not a never in thing. No. All right, then we know for sure. So, again, so why is a Scientologist using Scientology terms like that with someone not in Scientology? That's kind of Scientologist 101, but they do it all the time anyways. And yeah, that's right, Lisa. It's a massage table. But tell me, how great is it that they got busted for it, not having a permit, and that the officer is actually calling the stuff out, including your creepy table that you got? What exactly are you doing here? I thought this was fantastic. Fantastic. So link down below to the full video. It goes on for like six minutes, you guys. Six minutes of Scientology having their butt, their butt, having having their butts handed to them. <laughs> it's so great. They stay around to make sure they actually do pack it up. And the rest of the video is them packing it up. I was watching it yelling, pack it up, pack it up. <laughs> it was so great. When you get a chance, go check it out. Another fun thing over in LA and Hollywood yesterday, we I think it was yesterday, we shared a clip of what the live streamers and protesters in Hollywood are calling uh, Charlie Tology. He is someone that the protesters locally suspect was sent to be an actual distraction for them. And lo and behold, what ends up happening? They make friends with him. They turn him into an ally and help him create a YouTube channel to now work alongside them. So check this out. This is so cute. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's picture, I don't know. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Are you still recording? Check. Yeah, he's still recording. Oh, yeah, yeah, almost yeah. done. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie Tology, that is his name here on YouTube. There's a link down below where you can see his channel. But how great is that? Story is he's there to distract, but they win him over, make him a YouTube channel, and now you know he's just friends with them, and we'll see if he shows up again. But yeah, we adore Charlie Tology. Same. Same, same. <laughs> Charlie Tology, just the excitement. But I love this. This is one thing I love that we've seen over and over again is the way many times in many different communities where the people live streaming and protesting Scientology are supporting local, supporting local businesses, making friends with people nearby, and even turning Charlie Tology, Charlie, into Charlie Tology. It's just so different from how Scientology actually handles things, or I should say fails to handle things, more like their, their own foot bullets. Let's take a look at uh, Film the Police LA, which is William Goode. His other channel here on YouTube is Scientology Audit Streets LA. William was confronting the LAPD about their scandals, and he was really letting them have it. And we all are aware of the tie between the LAPD and Scientology, Scientology being if not the, in fact, I think they are the largest contributor financially to the LAPD. That is, that is incredible. So I'm glad that he is there calling out some of the corruption happening within the LAPD. Let's take a little peek at it. And I appreciate the work you do in gangs. All right, it's, it's important. And it's really important when we're here in the mission division, right? Because the mission division cops, the gang unit is under investigation right now. For what? For being a gang. They were pulling people over and robbing them, literally robbing them. This, that's where we are right now. When you guys are talking about the hard work they're doing, that's what the Mission Division gang unit is doing. They are robbing the people of your community. They're putting air tags on their car. But you know what? They got it from the number two in charge of the LAPD, Labrada. Where is he at today? Because he was putting air tags on a subordinate's car that he was sexually harassing. And what about the last chief before Troy? He went in court and admitted he covered up sexual harassment of a captain in the L. He let him have it. And that is from William Goode's Film the Police LA channel. He did an amazing job. 
Yep, gonna faucet. I agree. Love it when wool goes off. Absolutely. That was fantastic to be able to see that. Meanwhile, over in in uh in Hollywood, outside of La Poubelle, DOA gets assaulted. Here's the thing. Earlier, these guys walk by and one of them says something along the lines of, You're the guy who followed Francois home. And he identified DOA, claims that he is that person. And it explains, I think, what happened next, what we actually see happen during the assault. Now, I'm going to have this muted because there's a lot of F-bombs in it. And we're still a little early in this video. So let's take a look at it, though. You pretty much can see what ends up happening. See, this guy's just like getting in his face there. And he takes the camera off of the table. I'm, I'm sorry, the phone. And then the other guy goes and shoves them into the table and knocks them down. And he's DOA's trying to get his phone back. The guy punches him in the face and then he goes and runs off. And he's got DOA's phone. So he's going over there, following the guys. And Laura's like, Laura FM is telling them to knock it off earlier on as well. You know, and there's, and then the guy spits in his face. He spits right in DOA's face. And I do believe he has his phone, which is what I think DOA is trying to get back. And then, yep. Yeah, and then I do believe he gets his phone back from him. Unbelievable. And he's trying to get in his face again. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Pippi Long's talking, you fell asleep. <laughs> well, you know, we'd catch it here on the recap. Okay, so Fair is saying that uh, the chat, chat found these people as well. Of course, because the chat knows all. <laughs> the chat is like its own entity moving throughout the community. I love it. I absolutely love it. Super helpful. Super helpful. We're going to go look over in Chicago at Windy City Satan because yesterday we were talking about how Scientology uses L. Ron Hubbard's tone scale of emotional tones and that if you, if you behave in a way that's half a tone to an entire tone above that person, that you will raise their level. And Scientologists are told that everybody who's protesting Scientology is antagonistic towards Scientology. And that is the truth at times. Scientology creates an antagonistic reaction by what they're doing. Majority of the time, you see people pretty much being chill, protesting, sharing information. But because the staff have been told that everybody is antagonistic and just rah against Scientology, they are told to respond with boredom in the emotional tone of boredom. So you'll see a lot of these fake yawns and they're acting like they just don't care. This is what they're trying to do. They are literally applying the L. Ron Hubbard tool book, rule book for handling people that are antagonistic to Scientology. And Windy City Satan Watch in Chicago caught this on video again. So we know they're doing it because this is the second time now that we've seen it. And it's kind of hilarious. Care to share anything positive about the church? Oh, the yawn tech. I like that. So you're half a tone up on me, huh? Are you allowed to think on your own? Care to share anything positive about the church? I just love that he called them out on it because that's exactly the thing that they're trying to do. They're using L. Ron Hubbard's technology on the tone scale and acting like they're bored and just can't be bothered with it. It's supposed to raise the protesters on the emotional tone scale. And it doesn't work because that's not actually the reality. That's not the energy of that situation or the one the other day when they were closing the blinds and trying to fake yawn to show boredom. For one flunk, boredom could be, you could look so much more bored without the yawning. But hey, at least they're trying, I guess, right? They're trying to use some, the tools that they have available to them in Scientology to deal with protesters. But it just comes across as being totally stupid. We are gonna take a little peek. Someone sent us a peek into Edinburgh, uh, the organization there for Scientology. And we just get a little look in the door, but it's exciting to know that somebody is there looking and putting it on social media here on YouTube. And you'll be able to see, this is like SP Edinburgh. Is it, is it Edinburgh? 
Edinburgh, Edinburgh Org. I think that's how you say that, but you guys let me know if I'm wrong. Let's take a little look. Absolutely not. The biggest takeaway from this was that it's empty. And I know this is going to shock all of you. You're going to be like, oh, what? <laughs> it totally is that way. It totally is that way. Empty, 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 empty. <laughs> all right. Some people are still Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Let's see what Nancy says. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Okay. Couple, 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 couple ways to say it. Edinburgh. Beachcomber saying Edinburgh. Well, whatever it is, you guys know where it is. And that is what happened. <laughs> All right, let's go over. Now we're going to go to Clearwater. Oh, it's a little steamy out this morning. There's no I'm outside and sweating a little bit. Okay, jokey. Let's go over to Clearwater and let's take a look at, we're going to look at a video from Lori Plays because she caught Erica. Erica does not stream, stream here on YouTube, but she is out there with Scientac protesting Scientology for hours on end. And she's absolutely amazing. And Lori comes upon her and Erica shares. She gives us an example, shows us the Scientology pivot, the Scientology pivot, I think she calls it. It's hilarious. Check this out. It's our girl, Erica. She's the one that's always here putting in the man hours, putting in the work. The Scientopivot. The Scientopivot. Well, let's see it. Oh, that's so Sciento. That's the Scientopivot, y'all. Yeah. And, you know, usually they're all... No, they're all being directed that way. Now they have to walk in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you have a shirt. You have shirt tech and sign tech. And I guess they're the catching up. Yeah. They're all going to have to work there at Yeah, exactly. Hi there. How are you? We're just I just love it. The sign toe pivot. And oh my goodness, did we see a lot of that. We really got to learn what that was. We saw it all over the place. So yesterday, we're going to talk more about Clearwater. Yesterday, we it was me. My Tony was able to make it, which was so awesome. And Kelly Copter and Erin from Growing Up in Scientology were out there. Kelly Copter wasn't able to live stream that. She was having issues, but she did record a lot of video. I cannot wait to see the video she puts together based off of this trip. I think it's awesome. So we're out there, and at one point, we were all in the library across from the Sandcastle. And the Sandcastle is where Scientology delivers like their top auditing for their operating Satan levels. So the people going in and out of the side of the Sandcastle are probably more of the, I mean, if you're, I mean, you're paying OT level money, so you must be pretty well off at that point. And you're doing higher level auditing in Scientology. So I, always, I feel like it's a good crowd to go in and protest. And then they have the staff there too. So we're over across the street in the library and up above, we can see where they're having people run out to the buses. And I'm pretty sure security is watching Aaron's feed, not necessarily all of us. Well, the only people who were live streaming yesterday, I think was Aaron and myself because Kelly was not. Anyways, I didn't think they were watching my stream. We knew they were watching Aaron's because when we were live streaming, they had people go out an entirely different door and we're like, Ooh, they are watching Aaron's stream. I didn't think they were watching mine. So I left the building and I went back across the street to where the buses were coming and going from, thinking that I could see some of the Sea Org members. And I totally could. I totally could. You'll have to excuse the shakiness. I really need to learn how to use a gimbal and do that. Um, but I zoomed in because you could see Sea Org members going into the bus. And uh, yeah, I'll just show you a clip of what happened. Call your families. Disconnection is wrong. Your families love you. The 
it's you can see here like there were so many of them they're going to be so pissed when they see this but i guess you know you can't make up all their faces because of the moving around this is why i need to learn how to use a gimbal but there were so many of them and they were redirecting the buses as they do you know we've seen that so many times they'll go ahead and re redirect the buses so that people don't see where they're going get there on camera but i must have caught when i ran out there a couple of buses a few vans and just sharing with them my favorite things like david miscavige beats his staff uh tom cruise's best friend is a squirrel <laughs> just all of my favorites and i gotta tell you guys it was so great it just was so i don't even know how to explain the feeling of how freeing it felt we did protests in Chicago, but it's not the same. Chicago is is a, a what's called a class five Scientology organization, but to protest at a Sea Org organization and one that I had done auditing at as a public person of Scientology was incredible. It was so awesome. It was such a highlight. And to be able to have uh, my Tony there and have him be able to do it as well. If you caught my live stream or you catch it, you go watch it on the replay. He got in some really good protesting as well. <laughs> It was just a blast. We had a great time. Now, let's jump over and talk about uh, Oh No Nora's video, which was based off an interview that Dodge Landisman did with Mitch Brisker. And there were some things said, and Nora wanted to address that. We're going to look at a clip from that, and then we're going to talk about it as well. Smooth Steve, SPTV in New York, says, Natalie, when you snuck off and got that position by the exit of the parking lot, that was amazing. You really gave it to them. They heard it. <laughs> Yeah, and it also told me that they're not watching my live stream. That is the great thing about protesting with Aaron from growing up in Scientology. They're watching what he's doing, not necessarily what the when he's there that the rest of us are doing. And that's why that works, because I didn't even tell Aaron or anybody. I just left the building. I figured they would find me or check my stream and see where I was at. <laughs> but it was. It was a ton of fun. Oh, car, yeah, totally getting overheated, overheated in the Florida humidity. But Tony just put out a fan, which I forgot to do earlier. All right, so let's talk about, let's get to this video. Let's get to it, let's get to it. What do we have here? First, we're gonna look at, let's see. Let's look at this section of a video and then we're gonna talk about it. If you have a question, put question in all caps ahead of it, if you can, to help me find those questions faster. Let's see, here we go. Let's take a peek and then let's chat about it. Just absolutely inane. I mean, here's the deal. Let me just say this. I'm going to go on record as saying this. Everybody can attack me all you want. You all know my contact information. You're used to it. Yeah. Attacking you is not the same thing, Mitch. Let's just be clear. You are not a victim. You are not being victimized. You are not a hero who's trying to be taken down by some evil force. You are a blathering old man who's trying to rewrite history and bury your own sins along with everybody else who you claim to not be a part of anymore, okay? And you want to now rewrite it all to fit your narrative to sell some fakakta books that nobody's buying, okay? So let I'll let him finish. Yeah, there haven't been children in the Sea Org in 20 years. Okay. okay. That is a patent lie. There haven't been children in the Sea Org in 20 years. So let's do the math. 20 years ago was 2004. Okay, guys, I know 100% there were still kids in the Sea Org in 2004. I know of children born into Scientology, went only to Scientology schools, who were teens that I personally supervised and word cleared, okay, since they were little, little kids. And they went and joined the Sea Org 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, etc. That one, I got to say, honestly did catch me off guard. I did not expect them to say that because there just has been. <laughs> and maybe, I, you know, maybe he defines children or a child in a different way, but under the age of 18. You might be a younger child or an older child, but you're still a minor and you are not an adult. You are not a legal adult. So, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm with her on with her on that one. With her on that one. So let's take a look. There's the, the, this is <laughs> well. Let's show you the clip and let's talk about it. And then we're going to pull up a bunch of comments and questions as well. Let's see here. You got to let's take a look. This next one. He's talking about, or Nora is talking about the number, the thousands, the huge number of women and teens who were forced in the C organization to end their pregnancies. And when you're in the C organization, remember this, when you're in the C org, you are not, you're, well, you're not supposed to have premarital sex. So when we talk about teens and women who are forced to end their pregnancies, we're talking about ones who are also married. And with a lot of them, they did not want to do that. They were coerced and forced into it. We know this has happened because it happened It happened to me and I refuse. And I know what happened to me because I refuse. I know how I was treated because I refused through the entire pregnancy. And even after having the baby and then making me hide it and stay in a room where somebody had to bring me food so nobody would see the baby. And for two weeks, we were in that room until I was shipped off to Seattle to work in the organization there. And I had my daughter, Shelby, and I happily was there because I had her. And that's all that mattered to me is that I had my daughter. And we, uh, yeah, it's funny. We talk about that time and we used to keep her in a drawer. We pulled out a drawer and then just put blankets because we didn't have a bassinet. We had a stroller, thankfully. And you guys listen to this. The stroller that we had for my daughter was a gift from the children in the cadet org because the cadet org, as they were called, would do missions. And where I worked, I was in charge of helping to like take the money that they um, were given. So they would do a mission for an organization, like maybe bus tables or something. Their, their organization would be paid something. And then because they were minors, and I was in treasury at the Continental Liaison Organization, which is like the Western United States Management for Scientology, very Dunder Mifflin. I would deposit that. So I got to know them. They would come. And then if they needed something, we would process the checks for them too. If it was something they needed for their organization. And these kids took what little money they had. Oh, it's going to make me cry. These children took what little money they had and they bought a stroller for my daughter, who I wasn't supposed to have. And I thought it was just the most amazing thing. I mean, here we are, my daughter's 33. This happened 33 years ago. And it still just gets me because going, knowing what they went through, what they were going through, I, it just blows my mind that they were willing to do that and, and use what little they had. These kids had nothing. And they definitely didn't have their parents supporting them and being there for them. Um, so. Anyways, I digress a little bit, but this topic, this particular, well, let's just look at the video and we'll talk about it afterwards. Let me get this pulled up. All right. Listen to this. For the thousands, and I do mean thousands, of teenagers, young women who were made against their will. to abort their children and to force anyone who was brave enough to say, not today, Satan, not today, that they were willing to be ostracized and booted from the Sea Org, but that wasn't enough for them. They would then separate the husband and wife. And if the wife was like, well, I'm having this baby, they wouldn't let them talk. They wouldn't let them communicate. And then they would take the husband aside and tell him all kinds of nasty shit about his wife. Yep. This happened on a regular basis in the C organization. And as per usual, Scientology has their own narrative about it, about these coerced abortions and also about children being in the C organization. My sister was 14 when she was trafficked from Hawaii to the Sea Organization, told that she would have a guardian, never saw the man again, told a lot of things that she would be going to school. That did not happen. 
she was 14 and she was at the international base too. She ended up going, getting promoted and going there and being trafficked to the international base and then being sent back down to the Pacific base to LA where the blue buildings are. It is, uh, I'm just going, you know, I'm glad that Nora's just calling it out. It, it's, it's, I don't understand. And, and this is where I struggle with it because I feel that anyone who is contributing to sharing the truth about Scientology and bringing down Scientology, I am all for that. It, it, it gets difficult when you, when you try to tell people who have had a certain experience or experienced something that it didn't happen or it didn't happen that way. Because something happened to somebody else in the sea or it doesn't mean that it happened to me, but it also doesn't mean that what they're saying is not true. Because there are people in the Catholic Church who were not molested or assaulted by priests does not mean that it never happened. You see what I'm saying? It's each of us have had different experiences and these shared experiences, and you ruffle some feathers <laughs> for sure, and you're gonna get a clap back when you try to say that that doesn't happen or didn't happen when people experienced it, lived it, witnessed it, are still hearing about it. Because there are, there are many people, the beautiful thing about these protests and getting the word out and the beautiful thing about SPTV are the number of under the radar Scientologists and recently people who have left Scientology and or the Sea Org recently. And you hear what it was like for them. The other super cool thing is, you know what a lot of them say? You know what a lot of them think about the protests? They love it, especially the fun stuff because they've looked at it and gone, Wow, they're having a lot of fun <laughs> protesting Scientology. That it's not this dangerous. Scientology is a dangerous cult because of the way it treats its members. If you're not in Scientology, it's not a danger. If you're a member of Scientology and you're and you're 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 within that, yeah, it's very dangerous for you. When you are away from it, no longer part of it, they have no power. And people who recently left Scientology and those who are still under the radar and who have been reaching out to us and sharing what they think about it. Some who wanted to come to the meet and greet, but they were not ready yet to be, you know, fully out because of family and business connections. It's amazing to hear from them. And it really warms my heart because I know there are different protest styles. Mine, I like to have fun with it because <laughs> I don't get out a lot. And if I'm getting out, I want to have fun with it. And humor is healing for me. And I enjoy making fun of Scientology because how can you not? Surrounded by Scientology. Thank you, George. A great week with you and Tony and all. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Thank you so much. Thank you, George. He's been absolutely amazing. Shout out to you. Dustin Soda Fountain. We got to meet him as well. That was fantastic. He's doing a great job on his, on his channel. Uh, Roxanne wins. Yes, but once you hear other people's stories and realize how cult of Scientology silos information, you should stop trying to tell people their stories, experiences are not real. I, I I agree with that. I agree with that completely. I have heard experiences from other C organization members. That was not my experience. That did not happen to me. And it's something that in in my little world there that I didn't see. It doesn't mean it didn't happen because I didn't see it. A lot happens in the world that I am not aware of, it doesn't mean it didn't happen, right? This isn't if a tree falls and nobody hears it, did it really fall kind of thing. <laughs> and same thing with, with my story. When I shared about the coerced abortions in Scientology, which I shared when I left and did a story with the Tampa Bay Times, one of the things they did was bring out women who said, well, that didn't happen to me. Good. I'm so glad that didn't happen to you. I am so happy for you. <laughs> but it doesn't mean it didn't happen to other people. So I think when it comes to like, there are different ways of protesting. There are different experiences, Scientology, for people to share them and show up and put themselves out there that way. That is something that I celebrate that they're doing it because I know it's not easy. It's not. It's not easy rehashing these things. Many of us are not from the outside looking in. We're from the inside and the outside, looking at both sides of it, having been in it and now being out of it and being able to share that. And I, I support that. And I give credit to anybody who is willing to share those stories and those truths because it's difficult to do. It's hard to do. But I love you got to go watch Nora's whole video. It was fabulous. It was great. Let's see here. Let's go grab. Let's see. 
Uh, Anna has a question. How often is that massage table used in Scientology? All the time. You usually do a nervous disc on it where you, you run your hands up and down pretty much the person's whole body, um, their limbs, their arms, their torso, waist. You even get the waist on a certain part. Um, it involves a lot of touching. That is not a nervous system. Scientology was not one of the things I was very super fond of because you kind of really had to get your hands on, almost on the person's whole body. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as a massage. With a massage table and doing that, it definitely seems like a massage. Kelly Copter, I saw you were here. Hey, girl, missing you already. <laughs> We had so much fun, you guys, so much fun. We ended up not even, we had we had all these plans where let's do more stuff in the studio. Let's do more, you know, Aaron wanted, we wanted to do some sit down interviews. We never did it. We never did it because we had, we were so engaged in just sharing and talking and getting to know each other in real life because we had not met each other. At least I had not met anybody there. And I think most of them, I know I'm, Kelly didn't either. I'm not sure who Liz Gale had met and, and even with Jenna, but it was just so fantastic that it was, we just did that and relaxed and laid by the pool, swung on the swings, ate donuts. <laughs> Jersey Jan 527, has the SPTV Foundation received an increase of calls because of the increased protesting? Yes, yes. And we've all, as individual creators, have had more people reaching out. And this is how we know that it's getting through. It's getting through. Let's see. Jeffy777, are you aware of any couples who have successfully left together? Absolutely. My husband at the time and I left together. There's another couple I know who they left together. M multiple, multiple. It's especially... It's more common if you're not in the C organization to be able to leave together because you're, you know, you, you don't, you, you like, you live in your own home, you have a, your own separate job, but absolutely, absolutely. I've seen that. David Griggs, thank you so much for the super chat. Why not have the protesters like Pearl Snappy use chalk to write how to escape through the foundation's phone numbers? She has done that. They put the foundation website, they put the foundation phone number. That thing has been chalked all over the place, including here at Flag when we were there. So that definitely is being done. And I love that. Yep, absolutely wonderful about the increasing calls and emails and people reaching out. And I really love hearing from them because I know how I feel about it, like how I like my style of protesting. And um, I was glad to hear that they notice the fun. They notice the fun. CB says, such important connection time. I find that with my family. We have ideas of stuff to do together. We mostly end up just hanging out, talking and eating and playing board games. Yes, that was pretty much it. <laughs> we played games. It, I, I just had so much fun. I'm so behind of, on everything, but it was completely worth it. And I got to tell you guys, it was so needed. So needed. Lil Lil loved your modeling moves yesterday. Thank you. I had so much fun with that. I really got a kick it out of doing the uh, the merch that we do, the Never In shirt and the uh, Distracted by SPTV. I wore that one a couple times. I love that one. And thank you so much to everybody who's been hitting the merch store too. The merch is a great way for us to fund some of the travels too. And I like that because then you guys get something and you're wearing it out and about. Send me pictures. I've gotten some. I'm behind on getting them shared on the community page, but we are actually going to be heading home today and then I'll be getting caught up on all that stuff over the weekend as well. Asen, yes. Hanging out and talking is part of y'all's healing process. Love that for you all. I just can't even, I almost cannot even put it into words how great it was. There's something about being able to talk to the other people who, you know, who, who you have that shared experience with that was just fantastic. It's just great to just build, just really, you know, build those relationships and have more of an understanding and also share so much about life outside of the cult, right? Because we're all out. What else, what else are you doing? What do you like to do? What are your hobbies? What are just getting to know people? It was so much fun. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa says safe travels. Absolutely. 
Lil Lil says, especially the one with your sign in front of flag. Yes. I love that sign. I'm going to try and be able to take it home. Rika says, this movement has helped me heal some of the garbage from a different cult that I grew up in. That's fantastic. And I do believe that is the case. I think so many of you, people who've never been in Scientology, you beautifully lend your voices, your time, your support, getting the word out, reaching out to your elected officials, liking, sharing videos, subscribing, all the things that help contribute to getting the word out and the truth about Scientology is amazing. And that you can connect and find healing with your own trauma, I think is so beautiful. And I love that. Larry B, hey, Larry B. Thank you so much for gifting a Scientology Life After a Cult membership. If you're on an iPhone and you want to, you're watching this on an iPhone and you want to be a member, you got to go in the description of the video and hit the link there. Everybody else should be able to see that join button. That is something. You know, Miss Sunrise Dawn, we thought about that. In fact, my Tony was going to see if we could get it shipped home. Babe, were you able to ship the sign? No, oh, no, he said he couldn't. So we'll figure it out. We will figure it out. Worst case scenario, I will have one made back in Minneapolis. Mary, my never in shirt arrived yesterday. Love it. Awesome quality. And I will wear it often. Merchandise is a great conversation starter. I agree. I found that to be true when I wear it around where I live too. I love that. And, I, and the never in shirt sweatshirts, those are, it's one of my favorite because I love that we put never in, never in Scientology, but all in and bringing down the cult. And that is so what I, uh, that's so what I see with all of you. So Kelly is just a cutie pie. She really is. Here, and the other thing is what you see is what you get. So what you guys and what I've seen in videos, the people I've met, that's exactly who they are. It might be more like for me, I in out when I'm not live streaming, I have a tendency to swear like a sailor, but I don't do it online because it's not kind of like how I want to build my channel. And, uh, you know, I don't want to get in trouble for YouTube for it either. And honestly, I, I just, for me, it's good practice. Because <laughs> in my professional life, too, it's pretty much like this. I don't go around dropping F-bombs. But the minute I hang this up, trust me, <laughs> it gets crazy. Uh, thanks for the tip, Dr. MLS, but we're not, uh, yeah, we're not flying that airline. Hey, Poe on the Go. For those of you that didn't see it, Poe on the Go did a great video about how to start a channel. You can have a head over to Poe on the Go and check that out. Stasia says, I'm an empath and stories like these remind me how lucky I am and how proud I am of all those who have escaped dangerous cults. Yeah, absolutely. I, sh I share that as well. Oh, you can take the sign carried it in a suit bag. Yeah, I think I'm just going to take it. That way I can wear it in the airport. And if they won't let me put it on the plane, then fine, keep it then. I'll get another one made. Hopefully I'll have to ask uh, Spit Clearwater, ask Kai if he kept uh, you know, the file for it so that I can do that again. Sue, Kelly, and you are great together. The laughter is contagious. We had so much fun. We just had fun. And you guys know there's been a lot going on in my life privately. We're going to talk about more about that after I get back home. But uh, so deep. Um, Jesus is God. What app do you use for your thumbnails? They're so good. Thank you. Canva. Just in Canva. Oh, Don Holt. This is my emotional support sign. It travels with me. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I do have my emotional support body, Satan. She's already packed in my purse for easy access. I had her come with me when we were protesting. I don't know if you guys saw. I had her on my hat. I brought my own body, Satan. I wanted to keep her safe because I know how Scientologists are always trying to get rid of them. <laughs> All right, you guys. I agree, Lil Lil. There should be a yearly reunion. April's a great month in Florida. Yeah, it would be cooler. It would be cooler. You know, the whole, when, when Tony and I decided to come to Clearwater, I was talking to George, uh, surrounded by Scientology, and we just realized, like, if we're going to do this, we kind of need to do it now. And so we had set some things up, like Chicago, and being able to come here and do this, because it's what we wanted to do, be in some warm weather, right, be able to protest Scientology, be able to do that with Tony. And around that came this beautiful um, 
you know, vacation, being able to protest Scientology, but also spend time together and get to know people. And I'm so glad that other people were able to come. And uh, yeah, I think there should be something probably throughout the year, because not everybody can make everything. I don't know that that's realistic to get everybody to something at the same time. But if all over the country in different places, if people just want to, different creators want to go, hey, we're going to be here, we're going here, you know, join. We ended up doing a meet and greet on the Saturday, I think it was last Saturday, because there were so many people who decided to come, which honestly, we didn't count on or know was know was going to happen. I just thought, oh, we would do something where we can meet the different people who are protesting out here. But we were overwhelmed by people wanting to come from across the country. And so we threw together the uh, Saturday night meet and greet. And that way, anybody who wanted to come could. And they did. And that was so amazing to meet so many of you and hear what draws you to these different channels, to hear your own personal stories, what motivates you. It, I enjoyed that so much. It was so great. It really putting, putting faces to the different names in the chat and getting to know people. It just made me want to do this even more because they were just super, super cool people. Hey, hey, Paula, I hope you guys will do an SPTV conference. <laughs> There's talk of it. It's just, it's a lot to coordinate and a lot of different people. And SPTV continues to grow with different people creating channels. And we hope that is the case because anybody, if you want to start a channel and start sharing and exposing Scientology, I think that is a great thing. Send me a link to it. Absolutely. Thank you again to everybody who's been sending me links and clips that I could share here on the channel, especially when we're traveling. I appreciate it. Keep doing that. You can reach me, Natalie, at lifeafteroccult.com. It is so super helpful. And I cannot thank enough the people who have take care of, taken care of us and embraced us since we've been here in the community. Hospitality from, you know, Aaron from growing up in Scientology, surrounded by Scientology. George has been absolutely amazing. Sandy McKenna had things set up and set up little surprises for us that were great. I, I just can't think people enough. Lori Plays and Farrell Sherrill on the loose and Dustin Soda Fountain. Spit Clearwater Kai, we got to meet his wife and his and his kid. Just It's just been amazing. I'm sure I'm forgetting some people, but there were a lot and it was absolutely fantastic. I think there is going to be more to be more to come there, more to come there too. That's funny, Tina, in the last 20, if air travel requires an emotional support animal, don't fly people, know your limits. <laughs> Oh, Jay Sant, thanks, Natalie, for what you do. So glad you had fun. We did. I'm really glad that we did this. Really glad. And thank you for the safe journey home and all of that. Definitely keep those positive thoughts and things going because it, it was difficult getting here. And we're hoping and anticipating that it's going to be easier and more straightforward to get home. All right, you guys. So I am going to wrap it up here. Please hit that like button on your way out. Check your subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. It would mean a lot to me if you did subscribe. I hope you guys get out there. Get out there today and have the most amazing cult-free day.